What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to write transformations of functions. So we're going to cover a lot here. We're going to go over translations, reflections, vertical and horizontal stretches and shrinks, and combinations of all of those. Okay, so we're just going to go over a bunch of examples. I'm taking all of these from the Common Core Algebra 2 book. So let's start with these right here. And the instructions just say in exercises 3 through 8, write a function g whose graph represents the indicated transformation of the graph of f, right? So it's just basically saying it's going to give us a function f of x, and then we're going to have to translate it. And then after we translate it, that new function is just called g of x, okay? So the first one we have is right here, f of x is equal to x minus 5. So ready wrote it up here. So then it just says translate it four units to the left, okay? So whenever you move a function left or right, it's not too bad. So whenever you move to the left, that would be a negative number. And when you move to the right, that would be a positive number, right? So just like on a number line or a graph or whatever. Okay, and now this is like a two-step process. So the first thing you wanna do is in order to move it side to side, wherever you have an X, you're just gonna replace it. And so we'll just write it with G of X. And then wherever we have an X, we're gonna replace it with an X minus h in parentheses like that, okay? And then we still have this minus five on the outside, so we'll bring that down like that. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step is just figuring out what number we have to plug in for h. And that simply comes from the translation, okay? So here it says translate it four units to the left. So four units to the left would be a negative four, right? So that's the number we're gonna plug in for h right here. We're gonna plug in a negative four right there. So then uh, g of x is gonna be equal to x minus and then negative four. Okay, and we still have that minus five out there, right? Simplifying this, uh, x minus negative four is equal to x plus four and then our minus five. Okay, now that we simplified this, we can actually drop the parentheses if you want. So we're gonna have x plus four minus five, which is equal to x minus one, okay? So that's our final answer right there. So g of x is equal to x minus one. All right, next one is f of x is equal to x plus two. So I already wrote it right there. And translate it two units to the right. So two units to the right would be a positive two, right? So again, the first step here would just be rewriting our x as x minus h, right? So then we're gonna say g of x is equal to, in parentheses, x minus h. And then we have this this plus two on the outside, right? So then uh, g of x is equal to uh, x minus h. h in this case is gonna be positive two, so we're gonna plug in a positive two right there. So we're gonna have x minus two, right? x minus two like that, and then plus two, okay? Again, you can drop the parentheses if you want, so we're gonna have x minus two plus two, which is equal to just x, right? So then we get g of x is equal to just x, boom! All right, next one is uh, five. So f of x is equal to the absolute value of four x plus three plus two. And this time we're gonna translate it two units down, okay? So whenever you translate a function up or down, when you go up, it's a positive number. When you go down, it's a negative number, okay? And in this case, we don't need that x minus h crap. All you have to do is add or subtract the number at the very end, okay? So in this case, it says translate it two units down. So that'd be a minus two, right? So literally all you have to do is subtract two at the very end of the function. Okay, so then here we're gonna get g of x is equal to the absolute value of four x plus three. And then here plus two minus two is just equal to zero, right? So then here uh, g of x is simply equal to the absolute value of four x plus three, okay? <gasps> Boom! All right, lastly is f of x is equal to two x minus nine. This time we're gonna translate it six units up. So that would be a positive six. So literally just put a positive six right there. Okay, so then here, g of x is equal to two x minus three. Okay, not too bad, right? <laughs> All right, now we're gonna cover reflecting in the x and y axis. So here's the two rules that you need to know. So if you have to reflect across the x axis, this is the rule. So it just says g of x is going to be equal to negative f of x. So literally you just multiply your whole f of x function by a negative sign in the very front, okay? And if you have to reflect across the y-axis, then it's gonna be g of x is equal to f of negative x. So you're gonna turn all the positive x's in your function into negative x's. Okay, so let's see these two bad boys in action. So 
Uh, here's number 11. So we're going to start with this one. f of x is equal to negative 5x plus 2. And it's saying we have to reflect it in the x-axis. Okay, so I wrote it over here. f of x is equal to negative 5x plus 2. So for the x-axis, you just multiply your whole function by a negative symbol. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to literally just say g of x is equal to negative and then multiply our whole f of x f of x function by this negative symbol. So we're going to multiply this whole thing up here, right? So negative 5x plus 2. Okay, so then we can just distribute it in there. So we're going to say g of x is equal to positive 5x minus 2, right? Easy as pie. Oh, that would have been a good name for this channel too, huh? Now number 12 here is f of x is equal to 1 half x minus 3, and it says reflected in the x-axis. Okay, so again, we're going to multiply our whole function over here by just a negative symbol. So then we're going to say g of x is equal to negative, and then this whole thing, 1 half x minus 3. Okay, so then g of x, uh, g of x is equal to negative 1 half x plus 3. Boom. Okay, the next one, 13, f of x is equal to the absolute value of 6x minus 2. Reflect it in the y-axis this time. The y-axis. So that means wherever we have an x, we're just going to replace it with a negative x. Okay, so then we're going to say that g of x is equal to, and then here in the absolute value bars, we can write this as 6 times, instead of 6 times x, we can write it as 6 times uh, negative x. Okay, and then this minus 2 on the outside. Now, 6 times negative x is just equal to negative 6x, right? So then this is going to be equal to the absolute value of negative 6x minus 2, okay? Now, some teachers are going to be good with this answer here. Some don't like this negative symbol out front and want you to get rid of it, okay? So in case your teacher is one of those cool people, then the way you get rid of this is by writing it as the absolute value now, this negative symbol is really just like a negative 1, right? This is like negative 1 times 6x. So that's how you can rewrite it to kind of get rid of this negative symbol. We can say the absolute value of negative 1, and then we can actually split this into two different absolute value bars. So we're going to say negative 1 times the absolute value of just 6x. Okay, that's kind of how you get rid of a negative symbol. It's almost like factoring it out, okay? And then we still have this minus 2 at the end, right? So minus 2. Okay, now what is the absolute value of negative 1? Well, it's just 1, right? So then 1 times anything is just itself, right? So then this basically just disappears when we're multiplying. So then this is going to be equal to the absolute value of 6x minus 2, okay? And then, ta-da, math and magic, the negative symbol is gone, right? So then you can say that this is a g of x. Okay, 14 f of x is equal to uh, the absolute value of 2x minus 1 plus 3 reflect it in the y-axis. All right, so again, we're just going to replace our x's with a negative x. So then here, we're going to have g of x is equal to the absolute value of, and remember, we're multiplying this x by a negative x, so we can write that and just bring it out front, right? So we can write it as negative 2x, like that, minus 1 and plus 3. Okay, again, some of your teachers might be cool with this. Some other cooler ones might not. So then we can just uh, get rid of this leading negative symbol. So this is going to be equal to... Now, here we can actually factor out a negative 1 from the negative 2x and the minus 1, right? So if we write it as negative 1, and then in parentheses, we're going to have 2x plus 1, right? Absolute value plus 3, okay? So then this is going to be equal to... And then breaking it out into its own absolute value bars, we're going to have the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of this right here, 2x plus 1, and then plus 3. Okay, so again, this just disappears. So then this is g of x is equal to the absolute value of 2x plus 1 plus 3. Okay, now I'm actually going to skip over 15 because it's very similar to 14. Uh, so let's do 16. So this is f of x is equal to negative x plus 1. Again, reflected in the y-axis. All right, so f of x is equal to negative x plus 1. So wherever we have an x, we're just going to attach a negative symbol to it. Okay, so then g of x is equal to negative, right, because we have this negative sign right here, 
and then we're going to attach another negative sign to our x, right? So negative x like that, and then plus one at the end, okay? So then here g of x is equal to, well, a negative times negative is positive, so we have just positive x right to there plus one, right? Easy as pie. Okay, almost done. So now we're going to go over vertical and horizontal stretching and shrinking, All right? So here are the two rules you need to know. So if it says you have to vertically stretch or shrink something, then the way you rewrite it is g of x is equal to a times f of x, where a right here is just some factor, some number that they give us, okay? And it's really important to keep in mind that whatever factor they give us, so a, it's just gonna be some number, just keep it the same, okay? Keep a as a. Because on the other hand, with a horizontal stretch or shrink, the rule would be g of x is equal to f of a of x, where a over here is actually the reciprocal of a, okay? So a again is just gonna be some factor, some number, but whenever we plug it in, we have to plug it in as the reciprocal of what it gives us, okay? So I know that sounded just like a bunch of word garbage, so let's go over a couple examples, and I think it's gonna make some more sense, all right? So let's start with this one right here, 17. So f of x is equal to x plus two. Let's just write that down first. f of x is equal to x plus two. Okay, now it says vertically stretch it by a factor of five. Okay, so then uh, our new function g of x is going to be equal to that factor that it gave us, five, times the function f of x, okay? So we're gonna say that the, the factor of five, we're gonna keep it as five, right? Keep a as a. We're gonna say that g of x is equal to five times f of x. Okay, so this just means multiply this whole function, which is just x plus two, by five. Okay, so then g of x is equal to five times our f of x function, x plus two. Okay, and if we distribute that in, we're gonna get g of x is equal to five x plus 10, right? Easy enough, I hope. Okay, 18 is f of x is equal to two x plus six, so I wrote it down right there. This one's gonna be a vertical shrink by a factor of one half, okay? So again, for a vertical stretch or shrink, it's basically the same thing. Just multiply your whole function by that factor that it gives us. So here it's giving us a factor of one half, right? So we're gonna say that g of x is equal to one half times our function f of x, okay? So then that just means g of x is equal to one half times the function, which is two x plus six. All right, so then g of x is equal to uh, x plus three. Okay, so again, vertical stretch or shrink, just multiply your whole function by that factor. Easy as that. Okay, now on the other hand, we have horizontal stretching or shrinking, which is just a little bit more complicated. So 19 right here is f of x is equal to the absolute value of two x plus four. Okay, so here it says horizontal shrink, by a factor of one half, okay? Now there's two things to keep in mind. So this time you have to take the reciprocal of this factor. So what is the reciprocal of one half? Well, this reciprocal of one half is equal to two over one or simply two, right? So we're going to multiply our function by two, but the difference is we're not gonna multiply the whole function by two like we did with vertical. We're only gonna multiply the x's by two by our factor, okay? So then here, g of x is gonna be equal to the absolute value of two, and then this x right here, we have to attach a two, right? Because we're multiplying by a factor of two. So then we're gonna multiply by two x, like that. And then we still have our plus four right there. Okay, so then here, g of x is equal to the absolute value of four x plus four. Okay, the next one is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus three, which I wrote right here. Horizontal stretch by a factor of four. Okay, so again, the first thing we're gonna do is multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of four is equal to one fourth, right? Now we're, we're only going to multiply the x's by one fourth. Okay, so then here, g of x is going to be equal to the absolute value of one fourth x plus three. Okay, uh, let's keep it consistent, right? There we go. And that's it. Okay, so that'd be your final answer. G of X is equal to the absolute value of one fourth X plus three. All right, now to avoid making this video too long, I'm gonna do the combinations. 
in the next video, which will be linked in the description below and in the outro. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.